Yo, 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 live on location. Me and the blackest one are still staying our ass safely at home here in Orlando. But today, live on location from Sugarland, Texas, H Town Shorty. We got a very special guest, man. One of the best to ever do it Legend. in the NBA, AKA Wink Dog, representing the DMV area. One of the all time greats and my former teammate, City. We got Steve <laughs> Franchise Francis. Appreciate you for pulling up on us, Appreciate my boy. You, bro. Appreciate it, man. The Maserati slowed down for y'all this week, so I'm cool. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Swear. <laughs> Man, first of all, man, you know, we, we appreciate you, bro, being on our show, man. You know, you one of them dudes, and we definitely appreciate you coming on. City! Brought to you by AT&T 5G. First question is, when you first got to the NBA, who was the first person to bust your ass? It was Sam Cassell, man. Our first game it was my first game. Two point That I am. Two point Jesus. Man, we was, we was all together. You would tell me about the league the night before, you know. The veteran, ooh ah, and uh, <laughs> my adrenaline, my adrenaline. Plus, he won two championships here, so he probably, you know, he probably wanted to put the heat on me anyway because he won the chips. Here. You know, his young fella was coming, but it was the first game. It was a welcome to the NBA. Straight up. He How was, many times did he get you with that pump fake? With the pump fake, <laughs> million. I'm just like, don't jump, don't jump. Don't jump. <laughs> Screen and roll, screen and roll, pull up at the free throw line, just two points. Just post, did he post you up? I mean, of course, you already, about to tell you. you already know that. He's not gonna jump that high, but he's still gonna get that shot off no matter what. He's gonna hey, have to get shot right uh, yeah. Hey, he one of the ones that I talk about all the time is like one of the sleepers that used to kill your favorite point guards, but he won the, mo the most popular or the one that was getting all the hype. That's like, uh, my rookie year too, Terrell Brandon. Remember him, Q? Oh, he wanted the Brand. most slept on. on like, Man, boy, he, he was a serious problem. Like, serious problem. In Minnesota, man, I'm like, it's cold. It's cold as shit. And I'm running off these picks all day. I think he's going to the bass and he's just going to stop. <laughs> and I'm just like, shit. <laughs> but, good work. Yeah. Tacoma Park. Yeah. Tacoma Park, Maryland, man. Like, we usually start off, you know, talking about high school, but like, man, I feel like, like your journey and uh, and your game is just a product of the streets. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They ain't just start off in high school. We need to tell a little bit more before high school. So, like, just tell us about just growing up in Tacoma Park and the, the environment and just how it was in there. How you get? How you got to playing this game? I think um, just like y'all, like everybody, you gotta have a support system um, when you're young. And either fortunately or unfortunately, a lot of us didn't grow up with, with the wealth or we didn't have the access to have, um, you know, shoes or the, the, the best outfits to go. So we made shift, we played in the streets, we played in the alleys, we played in our rooms. I know y'all did the same thing. So it started there. Um, then as I grew up and just, just something else to do to be be hanging with the older guys. And I, you know, kind of um, took heed to playing basketball and football, you know. Um, so that's how I kind of started playing like that, my brothers and stuff. Tell me when you first started to realize, like, you know what I'm saying, I'm 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 kind of all right at this game. I, I could be, you know what I'm saying, like was it was it the neighborhood kids started recognizing your partners or how, what was it for you? Um, I think when I was like I think I was 13. We had a uh, AAU tournament at Cold Fair House. And at the time, I think Walt was playing in, OG Wiz was playing, somebody was playing. And it was Walt all Williams, the OG. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm short. I'm like 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, I'm playing for Kingman. We're playing there in front of all the, you know, the older the older guys. And um, it's like eight seconds left. And my coach, I don't, oh, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't the best player in the team, but I asked the coach to give me the ball. He gave the ball to me, man. I was 13. And I had a four-point play at the top. At Coldfield, I was at 13. To me at the time, or anybody, that was big. So right, right. there, I was just looking around and so said, like, maybe I could play here one day. God God willing, I was able to play at that same gym and make three-pointers from that top of the key. Like, it was nothing, man. Word. Yeah, so. When I was younger, like when I was like 13, cause I was tall as hell. When I was like 13 and stuff, 
I was playing in a pro am, playing against Anthony Bonner and Larry Hughes and all these greats from from my area, and it it molded my game. It made me tougher. It made me everything, especially when the they was betting and all that stuff. Cause you know, when they betting, you can't get out there and fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Because the first thing, I'm like, damn, young fella, why I picked the young dude? You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it molded our game to get better. Tell us some of the experience you had, like, you know, like on the court or, or, or the side, on the outside court or whatever, when the, when you was playing with the grown folks and yeah, when how I, that molded you to be who you are. Man, just growing up, y'all know, watching Moochie play, right? I'm a Moochie. I'm looking at Moo and, and Greg Jones and Kurt. I'm looking at Moochie and I'm like, man, what do they do that I don't do? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not their size. I know that they're in high school and things like that. So how they getting all this credit on the street? So they going to everybody court and they busting everybody ass. They going, right. they going around beating everybody ass. And so, you know, you got to take your hits when you're young. Because uh, Q, I heard so many stories about you in Chicago. That shit's <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I was there with Mr. Brooks and Twan and them. I'm like, damn. I'm like, damn, you. But same way, man. So you know, you gotta, you gotta, and you know, my older brothers, they were, you know, they were scared for me to play against the bigger boys, but you know, they let me play. So just being able to go out there and see those guys put on those shows for me, man, it just always enlightened me to try to do something. Tell, tell tell me how 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 did it come that you went to six high schools and only ended up playing in two games your whole time? How does that happen? That's a whole lot of practicing, man. One, well, <laughs> nah, that boy like that like, out there like Gucci and like to shoot dices. He out there <laughs> look, he doing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> out there, six high schools. Tell me what the hell how did that happen? So look, when I when I went to my freshman year, went to the same school that everybody from the neighborhood went to. Um, I wasn't as tall, I wasn't as developed as a basketball player. I was more than football. So you know, I went to uh, high school my freshman year. Got swamped by seeing all them girls. Got swamped by Stephen Study Hall. Got swamped, <laughs> you know, like this ain't junior high no more. So grades wasn't good the first semester. I was straight. I couldn't make it that time. So second semester, I got my grades up. The second semester, the next year of school, I got my grades up. I'm on the team, about sophomore year. So I'm on boss, playing me like one or two minutes or something like that. Boom. So I'm frustrated in school, you know, going home to poverty and stuff like that, going home to the street. Mm -hmm. And knowing that the school, you know, I, I really wasn't, I was just more focused on basketball at the time, you know, because that was what I thought could, could get me, you know, to where I wanted to be. So playing on the Boston team, not not getting any time. So I'm frustrated, bro. So what I do, get in trouble in school, get in trouble in school, get a spell for 10 days, get kicked off the team. And um, that was the end of my, my high school career right there. Yeah. So that shit was Boom, crazy. boom, boom, bouncing around. Yeah, so then after that, we moved, transferred to school, couldn't play there, transferred too late, then we moved back, transferred back to the same school. That, so that's once, it wasn't six different schools, whatever everybody say, so it was the same school I transferred. Yeah. And then after that, uh, when my mom passed, I tried prep school in Connecticut, Milford Academy, I'll never forget that. How was it that? Was, was that your first time being away from the crib on your own? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, now that I think of it. Yeah, it's a train ride up from DC to Connecticut. Yeah. But to be in a, uh, I was in Mayberry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing them. We playing MCI, St. Thomas, all of those schools. And I'm, we pre gaming them, and I'm having like 50, 40. Some of the players that went on to play in college, they, they successfully did it, but I couldn't afford the books. And, you know, they're going to try to get the best player there sold me a dream about the scholarship. So I was like, man, I'm taking the train back home. <laughs> it was like, look, man, I ain't gonna keep wearing this tight ass suit, not gonna be able to play, don't have the books and all these things. So I was like, I'm gonna take the train back home. Went home, chilled out, man, you know, and did my thing, you know. As I said, that player should be out I was kind of lost in the streets a little bit within that period of time. I was like, man, basketball ain't for me, so. Yeah. You know how that is. 
you know, growing up, a lot of people I know just stayed in that zone. Like basketball was the form, so they continued to do what they were doing. doing the other stuff. Mm-hmm. I, like, you got your GED. That's why I wanted to ask. You got your GED. What made you still believe basketball was like the way? Was that like your, like, you know, growing up in the hood, like that's that, them, them four lines, man, that'd be like your safe zone. I can't yeah. go to jail. I can't get in trouble. The most you can do is put me on the bench or give me a tech. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And once I seen some of my boys getting locked up, going to jail, six feet under, I was like, yo, oh, oh, oh. It's, you know, my uh my, my elementary coach, he talked to me. Some other coaches, Coach Wilson, you know, Clay Dave, like all these guys were like, yo, you got talent. So I was like, all right, let me try again. Mm-hmm. And then I just started playing again, man. And then the the, the, the drive came back. And I started getting a little bit taller, so that's the confidence. Getting a little mustache, girls here and there. <laughs> yeah. So, so how, how did you end, how did you end up at the JUCO? Was this was this by the help of like you said, some of the coaches and some of the people? Yeah, that was I like, played AAU playing. for Team Maryland. Um, we had a lot of guys going to big time schools at the time. Uh, we went down to Florida and played in the tournament down there. And, and, um, I played pretty good in this country that we from Pasadena, Texas, coming to. Me. Right around the corner from where I live at now. Like, hey, you want to go to school in Texas? I was man, I ran from this guy. <laughs> ran. And um, I didn't really talk to him. So the AAU coach was talking to him, talking to him. And I get back home and the coach was like, man, this man really wants to talk to you. So we flew up, talked to my grandmother, talked to my coach. And then my grandma was like, I don't like mom, I'm not going. So what else you gonna do? I was like, uh. So then that, that's when I made the decision to go there, got my GED, and then just start boogieing in the college system. When I seen the highlights of you in college, when they show some of the old footage, the way you dunking that, Ma, when did you start dunking? Like, what what, what age? So like, so like I got out of the poverty, got, got out of D.C. And got to Pennsylvania. I had, so when you got to college, you started dunking like that? I was dunking a little, little bit, but not like that. Cause down there, I had an open court. I, I was homesick, so. I would go in the gym day and night just to not think about going home. So I would practice dunks uh, with my boy. Y'all know Alex Scales. He was the same yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, He would show me some dunks. Alex was dunking. He could dunk still, probably. And um, man would be in there practicing all night on dunks, man. That boy got the trick shots down, yeah. Pat. That's all- why your calves was. That's why your calves was like that. I'm that's just gonna that boy calves. You don't have no calves. I don't have no calves either. <laughs> hey, look though. T- tell me. Tell me about. The game when you had the, the quadruple double against oh. Tom Marion and Ben uh, uh, down there, like tell me about like a, yeah. like what? Tell me about that oh. game. You went through because Tricks was a boy. Because Tricks was was one of the top dudes out there. I remember I him. He, he was number one. He, yeah, he was the top. One. He was a top JUCO player. Yeah. I think I might have been two, three. Paul McPherson. I think Paul was up there. Yeah, oh, P. Mac was down yeah, there. P. Kennedy Mac. King in oh, Chicago. Yeah, he was I shitting that bitch too. <laughs> I was looking at Paul. How the hell can he dunk like this? Hey, boy, look like a linebacker. Boy, look like an action. Look like a. Remember them when you could see WWE action figures? How that boy look? Yeah, man. And I'm like, man. And um, you know that whole a. I mean that whole uh junior college service. So. They, I think they were ranked number one, right? So we yep. put up the bus, we drive to Indiana. And I knew, I, I seen them going, and I was like, damn, they tough. And Tricks wasn't checking me, you know, I think he was like three or four. I was playing one or two. Right. But, uh, man, that was a sense game, man. There was so many college scouts there. That's uh, what I was going to say. Like, I bet that guy. Was... Quadruple double. I, 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 I very, I, he got the tape. He said he going to give it to me. But I just, I just remember just... You can't you let know, that footage go. You can't let that footage go. All out there because they said that was the best team. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's when it's the best when you do it on the top dogs. When you come in there and do it on the top dog, that's when that's when it really, it really get known. It's really certified when you do it on the top dog. You uh was it no question Maryland, or did it somebody else almost get you? Coach Samson. Kelvin Sampson, he was at Oklahoma. Coach Barnes mm. was at mm. Clemson. Um, John Thompson, like I told the story, he, he said he could take another behind Allen. So he he didn't want me to be at home. So he su- suggested I go to school away from DC. So I was like, you know, Walt, I, I, I always wanted to go there. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna just go to Maryland. But 
Um, I did think about the league. They told me Don, Don Nelson was going to draft me, I think, with the 28th pick. Mm-hmm. That was the same draft that Jason Williams got drafted in. So mm-hmm. I thought about it, but uh, going to Maryland was more of the treat than playing the NBA at the time. Oh, it was the best thing because that, that, that year at Maryland, oh, my God, <laughs> bro. Oh, my God, bro. You did that. <laughs> How was that for you coming from – Everything that you've been through in DC, you know what I'm saying? Not really playing in high school, you know what I'm saying? Moving back and forth between schools, going and, you know what I'm saying, Juco, and now you at Maryland. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's one of the, like, if you from DC, everybody know Maryland, you know what I'm saying? Like, now you at the at the major university and then you you about to make your splash. How was that for you? Like, was it a culture shock getting to the university? It was, it felt like I belonged there despite the, the path that I, that I was, on, you know, I had good grades in high school until, you know, my later, towards my later years, but it felt like I belonged there. Um, but when I felt like I really did, not just because you had quick Q, but that time we played at the BBNT tournament at the uh, NCI Center, and that was a homecoming to me. Like, all those games that you played, you always wanted to play right here. And to be able to win that tournament there, uh, beat the brakes off of y'all, Time out, time out. It wasn't no beat the brakes. Number one, it wasn't no beat the brakes. And, I'm, and look, it's crazy. It, look, it's crazy because it's like, say that. I knew you were going to say something. Nah, because yeah. time out, it's Let crazy. Let the man that, talk. Let the man talk. Let him finish his story. Go right. ahead, I go after that. Go ahead. Yeah. You right, go so, ahead. Because, beat the, oh, we started off at beat the brakes off of. That's where yeah, you said, beat, beat the brakes off of. They said they got this fresher Q and beat these centers. I'm like, what? They coming to play us. I'm like, all right. Cool. So I see them warming up. So they put this little short dude on me. I forgot his name. Rashawn Burno. <laughs> Burno. I was like, oh, they ain't gonna put one of the big guys on me. So after we, <laughs> they put one of the big guys on me. So I see Q down there playing Moses Malone ball, tapping the ball off the backboard. Yeah, rebound. to he itself, goes, all that extra. You know what I'm saying? Hey, extra, stats. Padding the stats, that's all it was, I'm padding like, the stats. He's trying to go to the league right now. We trying to be me. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm like, he's trying to beat me already. Yeah. Like, oh, he sure get an extra three or four a game off hey, just tipping it to itself. He's trying to turn that game. And I'm just like, T. Rod, Terrence Moore, box him out, man, but. Yeah, man, that, that tournament right there for me that everybody in the city was nationally televised. Uh, we played Stanford in that tournament. Uh, we won that game. And um, we, we went on the run. We went on to win, I think, our first 10, 11 games before um, we lost to Kentucky. So that was, that was a good one for me right there. Speaking about that game and that tournament, I'm not going to lie, because for me, that was early in the season, you know, before, you know, uh, you start planning your league and stuff. So that was like one of the early season turn. Like for me, <clears throat> at that point right there, I knew I was out of here. I said it. I said, cause like the next day, it was like, you know what I'm saying? Like we played George Washington the day before, then we played them. And like he said, every NBA scout was there. It was in the NBA building. It was at the Wizards, you know what I'm saying? MCI Center, but like, they were like a top five team. And they had a whole starting lineup for like everybody was supposed to be projected to go somewhere in the league. So I roll up in that point and do work. And I'm talking, look, this is what I remember about it. I swear to you, first of all, my, what about whole girls from high school? Joy Jones, Triple J, you know it. She, she went to Maryland. So the whole time she know Warren Dixon, LaRon and all this, shout out LP prop. She talking to it. Nah, my boy Q, cause we went to the same high school. You know, Joy, who went to us? She like, nah, my boy Q about to come through. You know what I'm saying? She talking crazy the whole week. I remember. Next day when it's time to leave, this is what I remember. We go to the airport, bro. I'll never forget it. One of my teammates came up to me. I'm on a USA Today. It was him and it was me. I was like, these two boys is gone. They out of here. I didn't even leave that year, but they had announced it after that. They was like, hey, name it. It was like, it's 30 some scouts here, all of this, that, and third. They were like, and these two stuck out. I'm like, Pfft. I'm sitting there like, it's over with. I could go whenever I get ready yeah. now. I knew from that day, that it was over with. That just gave me chill bumps because I, I didn't know that you noticed that, man. Because I was like, I'm looking, I see me, I'm on the front with like this. I remember dunking that thing. And you on the layout. I, I said, yes, dead I, serious. I, I, yeah, that was that was wild to remember that. But yeah, man, like those memories, that's what I like with my foundation and a lot of the high school kids and college and even NBA kids, 
that I talk to, man, those moments you savor, like for times like this, you reflect on. But, um, you know, of course, with social media and stuff like that, they're getting a lot of looks. And um, I'm just there to, you know, to try to get some type of guy. You at Maryland and you in the ACC. So in the ACC, you got North Carolina and it got Duke. We all then grew up and seen some North Carolina and some Duke games, but how was it when you had them times, to, uh, the first times when you had to play against the historic North Carolina, the historic Duke and Mike Krzyzewski? And how was it when you played going was, into them games? Both of those things were tough. You know, Elton was yeah. there, Trajan, um, yeah. Will Avery, at Duke, and then North Carolina and Coda, um, and some other guys. So. It was it was tough, man. Just the mystique of those teams going to Duke, going to Chapel Hill. I wanted to go to North Carolina, but uh, they had Ronald Curry at the time. So I, I had, you know, for me, it was just I, I get to play against the comp the best competition on t TV, and every the world gets to judge now. Um, so that was a challenge for me. But you know, playing against Duke, Coach K, he put a boxing one on me. Had Chris Carroll. You know that. And I think we had one on you too, Q. We had a boxing one on Q. Yeah, we put a boxing one on Q. But he still had it. Yeah, we put a it, got, got, it got out of pocket like that. It got, got real. <laughs> yeah, we had a boxing one on you. I remember that. And uh, yeah, so we went, we in, we're in Duke, man. And all these people, all the fans are yelling, G E D. G E D. <laughs> really? And I'm here, I'm, and it was just, the arena was just so. Lit. I heard that chant before. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, S A T G E D all of them. <laughs> and they just yell it, yell it, yell it. And I'm just like, wow, this this is real tobacco road, man. This is I loved it. I loved it. I got my shot to go up in Duke and Hoop. I look, the, the, the little fans, it's so funny when you underneath the little stands, you when they get there early, you try and get dressed and they're up there doing their little drrr, stomping yeah. up and down so it sounds like they drop your head. I said, yeah, it's cool. I did my work though. We lost. We took an L. That, uh, who was it? Uh, somebody banked the three from the top of the key, bro. A center banked the key from the top of the uh, banked the three from the top of the key. Clutch moment of the game. That's how we lose. And this was Jay Will. Now we played Elton them too at, the, uh, at United Center the year before though. So I had my I had my little you know. Duke felt me. Elton felt what was going on. Pause that. Nah, this is the Q hour, man. Nah. <laughs> nah, look, when I used to see Q bullying them, I was just like, hi. But... <laughs> man, you know, he's... Don't say that too much. D-Miles don't like to give me no credit on him, man. He always said, I couldn't play no defense and I ain't getting a lot of dunks on nobody, so. Yeah, but I remember he used to have the help side a lot. Hey, you remember how Catino used to bust that boy? You know what I'm saying? Cat used to get <laughs> that dirty left. Like, hey, look, look. That, that dirty I, 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 I didn't told Catino myself. He was my teammate in the big three, and he is responsible. My first two years, probably for about fifty percent of my turnovers, because he would just for me to bang, bully, bully, bully. Then he just strip. <laughs> but after that second year, you saw when I went home to Chicago and got with Tim Grover at Hoops. I, I he, The whole summer, it was keep the ball here, and I got over that. <laughs> Moving on. Hey, when I got drafted, uh, New Jersey had the first pick, Vancouver had the second pick, and the Clippers had the third pick. So it was a 50 50. Sound familiar? It was a 50 50 <laughs> chance that I was going to get picked number one, me or Kenya Martin. So at the last five minutes before they were. Well, Two minutes before they decided to uh, pick, they chose Kenya Martin. So my mama was like, my child is not going to no Vancouver. <laughs> so they better not pick him and looking at my agent. <laughs> so they, they called, but they were like, no, nah, we don't want another Stevie franchise moment. So we gonna, uh, we gonna pass on him and get Stromile. <laughs> and I ain't even work out for the Clippers and I got picked from the Clippers third. So when you got drafted, where did you want to go? Because I know you didn't want to go there, but where did you really want to go? I definitely wanted to go to Chicago, man. I I, I went there, I went to Deerfield, me and my brother, we looked at places there. Um, the whole mystique of me wearing number 23, and like, yeah. I was excited. <laughs> I was like, yeah, crowds lined and down me, took me to every place in Chicago. And uh, it was, to me, I thought it was a, a go. Um, but, you know, Things didn't work out, so I knew Vancouver wasn't gonna draft me. I told him, 
So we were in depth with conversation with Charlotte, with Coach Paul Silas, and talking to them. And uh, so Vancouver flew to DC, came to meet me at the prior, and they said, you got to wear a jacket. So I come straight from the workout, straight from the gym. I was like, man, I told them I don't want to be there. Because uh, actually, Shamika had a game in DC. The message was playing. I was like, I want to go to the game instead of meet with Stu and Brian Hill. Right. So I'm like, I, I was like, yo, I just had my gear on, so they gave me a jacket there. I sat that meeting with, with my agent there for like five minutes. I'm like, yo, I'm gone, man. Because I didn't want to shoot them no BS and try to say that I think I feel comfortable playing there. So I rolled up. Man. Well, one more thing about, about the draft. When I got drafted, Houston had the ninth pick. And I went to visit Houston and worked out with Houston, and I fell yeah. in love with Rudy T. Yeah, we went there and together. Just the, and that just the, the just the environment of just how Houston was, just the city, and just you know how cool Rudy T was. So I wanted them to move up to actually get me. How was Rudy T coming in? It was it was such an easy transition because he 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 wanted to know what what I like, what positions he's he's. At the time, he had Scotty, Hakeem, yeah. uh, Charles Barkley, uh, all those guys. So when he traded for me and had me with Hakeem and, uh, and Charles, he sat me down and explained, hey, they're going to try to demand the ball, demand the ball from me all the time, but I still want you to learn how to be a player in this league. You know, they demanded. He said, I'm going to let you make your own judgments. And, you know, at times, those veterans, they didn't like that I would keep the ball, but, you know, I knew that they were kind of, in and out of the game. So it kind of helped me early on learn how to be a floor general by him let me, you know, have control the ball. How was and that though to come team. in, you, you coming in as a rookie, you know what I'm saying? And you you playing with these guys you've been looking up to forever. Train. Like, like top 50 <laughs> players, like not just like, you know what I'm saying, all-star, all like time. these are like all time <laughs> legends in the game. Like Charles, uh, Hakeem, Scott, like these is top 50 greatest all time. Like how was that to play for, play play alongside those guys as a, as a rookie coming in the dunk? It took me probably to have the all-star break. Like after the dunk contest to really know the magnitude of the people I was playing with. Because you know, you're a rookie, yeah, everything is new. You're not used to this yeah. Bible. You're not used to eating like that. So everything is new and I'm learning this on, on the whim, I'm not used to the plane. So. I didn't really have time early on just to learn the, the media schedule, the, the city that we had to go do autographs and like all the things that come with it that consumes your time besides the actual game. And mm -hmm. so I had to, you know, I had time to think all sub break and people were like, yo, can you get an autograph from McCain? And I'm like, man, I don't get it for myself. You know what I'm saying? Right. I never, ask, I'm not going to ask him, you know, so I wait till he leaves something and I ask Keith, the trainer, hey, man, can I take that? Hey, go ahead and ask him. But uh, it, it was overwhelming, man. And the professionalism, the way that Hakeem showed me, um, really stuck with me to this day. As far as Chuck, man, he just, I don't know. He took. <laughs> like, speaking, speak, speaking of the All-Star break, I remember being in high school watching that All-Star weekend. And like the last 20 years has been because of that All-Star weekend y'all dunk contest the last 20 years of dunk contests and then the jack zach levine's and the Aaron gordon's and all this exciting that we've seen because it's been y'all because y'all brought it back you know what i'm saying it was it was hot in the 80s early 90s then it kind of died down and then you vince and t-mac like brought that back like looking back on it now and how everybody appreciate that all-star weekend and that dunk contest even though you didn't win how do you feel about that I got to see the celebrities I wanted to always see. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was at the game. I was able to sit and bump shoulders and be in that, that whole bubble atmosphere. This is what it's like to be a professional athlete, businessman, yeah. um, role model, and all those things at once. And it comes at you fast, as you guys know. And I wasn't really overwhelmed. Like I said, I, I felt that I belong, but I, I just felt so happy that I was able to step in with Dr. J, you know, even though they weren't in the dunk contest, but just to know that they did this before their life was, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, I can remember like watching that and just saying like, yo, I just, I could literally remember, I just was playing against him last year. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like for real, like this is like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like 
to see, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. It was less than six months ago. I just played you at the bb &T joint. And now, you know what I'm saying? I'm watching it real time. I could have went to the draft. I didn't go. I watched all y'all boys from Elton to you. All y'all get drafted. Now I'm watching you like, oh, this man is at the center stage right now. Like, how was that to experience that on that level to like go from watching the show and watching the event to like now you you center stage, you are the show. It's any, like any rookie thing that you do, like you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna be too early, you're gonna be too late, you're gonna sign through your grads, you're not gonna sign <laughs> up, you're gonna wear something <laughs> different. So, you know, right. learning, you know, the learning curve is all about what you make it. And I, I mean, you, of course, you're gonna have veterans who're gonna try to show you, but normally some veterans are gonna be clever their own way to lead you the wrong way to laugh at you. Straight mm -hmm. up. <laughs> you know, you right I mean, the the they're gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> The bus is at eight. Really, the bus is at nine, or it might be at seven. Yeah, right. They throw you off and sit in the back of the bus and laugh. So, yeah. you know, I know y'all have had so many experiences like that, you know, when, but that molds you as the NBA life, man. And I think that's some of the things that humbled a lot of us, that it was a unity of brothers that got at all time. How did you feel when you were going to be the cover boy on ESPN with like, and you know, you in Houston, they got you up there with Destiny. So I can remember that joint coming out like, man, this Biggest boy all the over world. the Yeah, like you were, you right there. Like, how was that? Like, not just, Houston, you know, for you, but like, like Houston, like that, like that meant something for the city. Like, how did that feel for that? I think, I think that they looked at it as a city. And I mean, of course, ESPN looked at it away as a new birth for Hakeem, you know, uh, about, you know, on his way out, and they seen mm -hmm. as a, you know, it's a young talent for the for the organization and the city. Of course, Destiny Child blowing up at the same time. Uh, so, I mean, why not? You know, and this was starting to build up. A lot of the economic growth was starting to come with you know us bringing money to the city and getting mm -hmm. ready to build the Toyota Center. So, I think it was a great marketing plan by both ESPN and the Rockets and whatever uh, you know company that the, uh, Destiny Child was with. Never seen plenty off of it, but hey. <laughs> hey, tell me how, how dope was it? Because first of all, to be in the league, it's a small fraternity, a small percentage, but the percentage gets so much smaller when you talk about those of us, not just in the NBA, but in sports, who get to have a signature shoe. You had a, you had a, you know what I'm saying, a, a signature shoe for however many years. Like, how was that for you, being that kid that came from the corner, you know what I'm saying? doing whatever you did and you growing up by, you know, everybody, we all was too poor to want to get Jordans in the best shoe, but like now you got your own shoe. How was that for you to get a, you know, to get your branded shoe? It was overwhelming for me, man. You know, just to to help design my own shoe, to help, uh, you know, be in the same talk with other guys like Michael Jordan's signature shoe. Uh, at the time, Charles Barkley, Pennies, Gary Payton, kids. Uh, all the legendary shoes came out around that time. Rashid's shoes came out, Allen's shoes. So uh, for me to have my safe signature shoe, I think Kobe was with Adidas at mm -hmm. the time. So um, I was happy, man. And if you ever noticed, I think my third, fourth year with them, I would, uh, every city we went in, the color of my shoe would change. So we in LA, I would have a black and yellow or black and red against you guys. So. That was always a good thing for me. And, and, and you know, the sponsorship of my grassroots programs is always great. Yeah, that's dope, man. One of my favorite highlights your rookie year uh -oh. is against my man. Our homeboy. And I and I hate to even put my man out there, but I gotta talk about this because every time I see it, it's just like, damn. My man T Hood, Southern Illinois representative, my guy. Ill State representative. I know you see this highlight. They probably show this, they probably send this highlight to you every yeah. day on your Instagram or something like that. But go take us back to that highlight of the mix up with T-Hood. Honestly, I was mad at y'all, y'all two about nothing probably. Y'all just probably had too much fun in Houston. Y'all was probably showing off or something. So <laughs> I remember Obeda Keezy went to Maryland. He was sitting on the floor. He was talking cash trash to me, man, cash trash. And I just remember looking at the bench and I, was Coach Gentry your coach? Yeah. yeah, this was the year before. This was the year before. This is the year before we got there. They had yeah. the other jerseys. So they had Keith Kloss and all them on the squad. They had them old school Clipper jerseys. This yeah, was the year before I, we got I, there, your rookie year. My bad. I don't know, let's just say like all the Clippers. Every Clipper was on that bench that Every Clipper <laughs> enemy. <laughs> Everybody was just yelling on the side. And I was just like, 
I think Olu Candy was on the bench on the yeah. side. Olu Candy yeah. was on the yeah. And I was like, man, why wasn't he just practicing something earlier? So he was playing that, that tough D, that that D, like I'm trying to strip you. And he and he I think he might have hit a couple of shots on me too. So he just left me on the island. I told Walt to get the pick. And I was like, man, I'm gonna just try something over. And I knew Big Keith Cross was right there. I knew I wasn't gonna duck over from that far. So I just stopped and just pulled up. But as far as the moves, I didn't plan them. It was just the way that my body and the rhythm that I was in. You know what I'm saying? I didn't plan that. It was just the way that he was playing. Yo, that was one of the craziest mix-ups, boy. Period. Like that was that was that was crazy. Hit him with a whole lot of hands on your knees, raising your little headsies and everything. Yeah, I was just like, man, what? When I seen it back, it, it it just seemed like it went like that. Just like you got any movie you do, it just so fast, you never really. But you ain't have to bag back out and then just. Yeah, you started back over. You had him. You was man. already you over and done with me. You started. You said, "Hold on, hold on, got a problem. We gonna start this thing over with. I'm gonna run it back and then ha 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 ha, and then you twist your legs. Yeah, when you did the float, I said, "Man, he didn't did a little chop kick." I said, hey, "He all out of pocket, man." That was gonna be the yelling on that sideline, man. <laughs> and, you know, and they just wanted to, you know. Every, back then, we looked for highlights, win or loss, because you know we were both both teams were in rebuilding. You know when y'all started this and all of that, like we're in rebuilding. If you don't have fun, like I said in one of my, if you don't have fun when you work at man, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. You got to be able to be yourself. You know to blow some of that that negative energy away from. You know, I want to ask you, uh, like I'm I'm big on systems, like with coaches. Coaches, what system they run? All y'all plays was just ISO. Cause like every time Listen. we play y'all, this ISO Mo Taylor, ISO Wall, ISO Catino, ISO D Steve, ISO Moochie. D like, this is what you heard. It wasn't, it wasn't ISO, this is what you heard. This is what you heard. Shake one, hey, shake, shake, shake two, shake, shake one, shake, shake three, shake four. Shake, I didn't run nothing shake. but that. Hey, they shake Mo Taylor and he ISO a mark and hit him with the left and right and go crazy. I said, hold on, dog. They shaking hey, anybody up. out here. Just shake. Uh, Rudy come walking playing? like this. Shake four, shake, shake three. I'm like, hold on. I'm stuck over here with Catino. He, he all this and I'm stuck. I'm looking around and ain't nobody here but him. Everybody standing over there like, oh, here, cat. I'm like, what type of offense is this? Straight up. Every, every single time we played uh, Mo, and, uh, we had to wait for Mo. He's like- Yeah, Mo Taylor wanted to go yeah, yeah. on the clip. Every time we played y'all, y'all already knew, cause y'all told, uh, we know y'all giving it to Mo. And every game we had to give it to him. I wasn't even worried about school when we played y'all. I was like, hey, Mo. And I knew y'all knew. <laughs> I knew y'all. I'm just glad that. I ain't had to check him. I knew it wasn't mine. I said, hey, I, I ain't gotta go worry about uh Catino too much tonight because they gotta defer. <laughs> exactly. So it was great, man. And I and I think like uh, our 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 series against each other, even though we were at we weren't the best team, but the battles. I, I don't think there were blowouts, you know, when we played each other. I don't think probably three or four. Possessions in each game. I'm talking about hardcore games for all the years that we ever played against. Like just yeah. the way y'all played and the way we played, it was like uh, it's in a, it was yeah. so entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Right. The way both of us played. One one more thing I wanted to ask you about with that. One of the guys I came up with uh, came out in my class was Eddie Griffin. You know what I'm saying? He was my guy, real cool dude, real quiet dude. How was it? to play with Eddie Griffin and, you know, know he passed away, but how was it to play with Eddie Griffin? Hakeem, man, I just got your bumps again. Hakeem took him under his wing, man, and like, he seen the, the, the capability to him to block shots and to step out and dream, Dreams. always say, <laughs> dream like, man, I, I wish I could shoot like this kid. I wish I had, you know, the, the length and the, the attentiveness of Eddie to be, because I used to run pick and rolls with Eddie, man. He would bail me out of so many over yeah. on the shot clock or he'll post up and find me cutting and things like that. And I, um, you know, I got a lot of his stuff in here, man, in my office. And, you know, it, it was hard for me because, uh, you know, he was one of the guys from Philly, a young kid who I think he was, he was right there at the threshold of breaking that high school, yeah. you know, you, know the joke you got that you went through. Yeah. Um, you know, I know- He could have went out of high school. He chose to go see, no, he was the number one player in my class. Yeah, I remember that, man. He yeah. went to Seton Hall, man. But when he got, I, I just, you know what I'm saying? I wish I could have spent more time with him, but he was a good teammate and he, and he wanted to play basketball. I know that. Man, real good dude. Shout out E. Grill. 
Tell tell me how was it when you when you there you know you doing your thing and then you get you get blessed with y'all y'all like, mean y'all mean come through bro <laughs> like and then y'all get to be like 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 it's twofold because it, it did something for y'all as a team but like everybody know during that time the Yao Ming and the, the whole China effect like that sent you globally go you, like you went crazy because you was that star next to him. How how was that the impact that, that he had coming to the team as far as a teammate and then like how did that impact you as far as the China win? I think I think that alone me was the closest I ever been to seeing a rock star. When I say that like all star weekend like you said how was it so imagine All Star Weekend every day with the media attention for Yao, yeah. um, and the magnitude of that and the, the country of China that he represented. And for me, it taught me to be calm and to be patient because this man has a whole country who's dependent on him to take care of their country, to be the initiator to break the barrier of a sport that they all love over there. If you go to mm. China, you see all kids on the court everywhere, day and night trying to emulate some basketball players. But for him to take that big step, uh, you know, I was happy for him, man, um, just to see that. Yeah, I play, I play with, uh, with with Wang ZZ when we were in LA and he was like, he was like kind of a little older, but he knew Yao and stuff like that. And he, he kind of, he was always somebody that was like you say, extremely patient. He could just, just be calm and like deal with anything. But like when Dodgers was Dodgers, one of the coolest teammates, man, those dudes got a, got, they have a, a, a quiet and a kind of like, they might not want you to do it, but they be having some funny ass sense of humor, man. Exactly, exactly. And and I think some of that rubbed off, you know, I, I was I was happy and I was impressed by the, 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 the calmness that he had under the pressure of playing against Shaq his first time. Um, the media, people asking if you know English and all those things. We go to hotels, but I'm gonna tell you, man, one day I took them to a club here in Houston. They couldn't believe it. Was like, Hold on. You walked into in a hip hop, you walked into a hip hop club with Yao yeah. Ming. Of course it was Moochie's idea. Mm. So, you know. <laughs> Moochie <laughs> talked him into it. Moochie talked him. Like, of course, Moochie. Of course you did, Moochie. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I'm, this is to say, listen, I'm not going to say what, but we all remember how he used to ride around with the Ford Excursion with the videos. <laughs> yeah, and I, um, I fell asleep in there a lot of nights, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of nights in the airport. How proud was you to see how y'all was like matching up with Shaq, how he was getting better every year yeah. with that matchup? Because that matchup was a dominant matchup off in the shoulder, big guy, off, and I'm dunking every time. And then all of a sudden, y'all hitting jumpers and he's a threat now. And he made Shaq respect them too. Yeah. He was, I, I was just so happy because at first, I don't think that he was scared. He was more nervous how he would respond to Shaq's flurry of dunks. He knew that he couldn't, you know, overpower him, but he wanted to play good to earn his respect. Win or loss, he just wanted Shaq to know that he played hard. Yeah. And for him to get better and, you know, work on his outside game and prepare for that game, it was like seeing your brother grow up to, you know, shoot backboard shots when y'all started layup. So it was a good feeling for me. Yeah. Well, you was at uh, Houston, man. Like, one thing I loved about just y'all and y'all team, just the bond the bond you, Mochi, and Coutinho, and Walt, and man, just how cool and close y'all is. Y'all, y'all remind us of us, you know what yeah. I'm saying? How cool and close we was. Just just tell us about the bond, man, how y'all just used to eat, sleep, like like everything together, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, think, I was there in Houston and having that in Houston. Like you said, Walt Williams, like they bought that Cato, like those guys bought that whole Portland app okay. because yeah. you remember when they lost to San Antonio, that Portland team was Jermaine O'Neal, Walt, Cato, yeah. Cato, Cato, like, Cato, my God, I forgot Cato. Shout out, Cato. <laughs> was good enough to win a championship. So some of those players that came over from the Scotty Pippen trade that, I, that was involved with myself, they brought that family orientation from Portland over to us. And we had a king, man, who's the godfather. So all of us kind of blended, but the younger group of myself, the core, Coutinho, Mucci, and Kenny, and Mo, all of us were able, though, we were Rudy's core guys that he wanted to be together so we could make it one. 
Mm -hmm. Similar with San Antonio did, but they stuck with their core. And, you know, Rudy got sick and our core was kind of broken up. But that's what we learned from those guys from there, for all of us to look out for each other. All, all of us, you know, when we get in the, we get in the league and, you know, we want to play and score the points, but we really want to play the, play in the playoffs and, and get on that stage. So when you first play in the playoffs in that, that first playoff series, like, how was it for you? The game was faster. You know, the fouls were harder. The crowd was louder. The popcorn tastes better. Everything you wanted. <laughs> yeah, they dressed better. The ticket price and the, and the games were on the line, man. And when you go to L.A., your first playoff experience to play against the Lakers, I mean, what else could you want at the time with uh, Shaquille O'Neal, rest in peace to, to Kobe, man. Like, to play those guys in your first playoff experience was unreal. And, of course, <clears throat> You know, you get to see Jack Nicholas that you've always watched on NBC. When it comes on, you see right. him at L.A. You see Magic Johnson, A.C. Green doing that. <laughs> yeah, and the Lakers, you know. So it was, it was, it was, it was definitely a great opportunity for him. Hey, so tell me this, man. We did all us here that dealt with it. How was it for you when you got traded from Houston to to, to Orlando? It was shocking. You know, uh, the shocking part was that I actually talked to the coach that week. I was like, if you're going to trade me, let me know. No, 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 no. So why I, they always like, happen? Why they just can't always be house? Well, Everybody's yeah. story is that. Like, why you <laughs> lying to me in my face? <laughs> Ain't nothing I can do about you trading. <laughs> like, shit, what, what you lie about? <laughs> and I'm, I'm on vacation. I'm chilling. And uh, I just see somebody like, yo, you about to get traded. I was like, yeah, right. I just told him to Jeff. He's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right. So then the next day, Boom, on the trade line. So I'm um, like, dang. So then I was like, who's the GM? Then they told me the general manager for the Orlando manager was a former guy who was a hockey guy. Um, he really didn't know too much about basketball. So I was like, yo, look, I, I pulled a Donald Trump and I don't even like Donald Trump. I'm not leaving. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to trade me. Y'all gonna have to trade. Yeah, I call Secret Service. David, give me about it. <laughs> Brand new house, my dream house. He right. said, oh, boy, I just built my house. And I just did to the bridge. I'm gonna trade me now. So um, I was I was a little torn because I just had finished my house. Yeah. One. Hey, listen. Yeah, Q, I was like, I ain't going. What, me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to the whole Orlando team playing down to pick me and my family up. I got there, talked to my, my uh, pastor, and he was just like, look, man, it's business, man. So that right there showed me that the NBA was, you know, even though the draft for Vancouver, but that right there. Right, right, that was the real part. We're, we're in the mix, we're about to, you know, coach, coach Rudy was gone, and Van Gundy was there, he went to the playoffs for the first time. I was like, all right. And that was it, man, that was some tough. But when I got to the One thing when I left the Clippers, like, I didn't see how good I actually had it, like how how it was, like I, what I was used to, how good I actually had. When I got traded from the Clippers, it was like, oh shit! I thought every team was supposed to be like that team. Like this shit is different oh, over here. Clippers to the Cavaliers, that's going from eating root Chris to McDonald's. You know that. <laughs> you know that they won seventeen games last year. Like, <laughs> like, like Andre Miller led the, the league in assists on the worst team in the NBA. That's what made him amazing. Like, so I lose yo, him. I lose the assist leader. They trade me for him. <laughs> like, like, ah. Oh. Hey, one thing about what you said, getting traded, like when I got traded from Phoenix, it was the same thing, bro. I was on vacation. We had just finished. We were 62 and 20, the best team record-wise in the whole regular season. We we lost to the eventual world champion Spurs. That year. We got eliminated by them. They went on to win it. So we feeling good. On vacation, I'm in New York. I'm doing a Jordan photo shoot, a, a commercial. It was a commercial back then because we had a we had a we had a photo shoot and a commercial and a video. This one, Common was part of the little ad campaign, Common Sense, and it was me, Melo, and To and Common in Brooklyn doing a video, da 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 da, doing this commercial shoot. I went on 106 in part the next day or something. The day after that, get a call at like the ass crack of the morning from my agent. Hell, you calling me for? Now, mind you, I had just played my first season in Phoenix. Like the whole season, I was I signed a six year deal, right? So the first season, I'm, I ended up we uh, I was building a house, 
So they had put me in like a lease house while I was building that one. House like seven minutes from the house I'm living in. I'm back and forth there every day, checking out the practice, looking at the progress. Bro, the house just got complete. They filling the pool up, bro. I had a crazy pool. It was like I had my backyard was like raging rapids, Steve. I had two separate pools being connected by a lazy river. It was all that. I don't even want to talk about it because I still get emotional about it. <laughs> but it was all that, right? So look, the pool gets comp- the pool gets filled. Them some of them some of my bitches traded me the next day. <laughs> I ain't never get to go. I was supposed to go back from New York, back to, to Arizona, and be like, check it out and be all like before furniture. I'm just gonna go over there and mess with it. Hey, they tra- I never went. I didn't go back. Next time I went back to, uh, to Arizona was for the physical because I had some insurance stuff with my back. I had to go to New York and boom, boom, boom. But I was so mad. I was like, no, I'm gonna do everything. I can't stay nowhere where they don't want me. But I was so, I was so hurt. Like you said, you just built, at least you kept your crib, right? Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't stepped toe up in there. I, st- I told my people to get rid of it. I did make a nice piece of change. I made a nice piece of change off of it though. I will say that that was the one good thing, but no, that was like one of the disappointments of my career that I didn't get to do that. I can imagine that, man. You know, when y'all came, we came to my house, right? When y'all came, yeah, yeah we came. Sugar Land, yeah. 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 Now the big city is in the big city. He on his way to the city to the city. Hey, hey yo, city. So we always yeah. wanted to play in the garden. Everybody wanted to play in the garden, the dirty garden. So like. You know, when you heard you were going to the Knicks and you was looking at the roster and you, you about to go in the garden, like, was you excited? Or was it like you, like me going to Cleveland? Like, oh shit, it's gonna be oh, some shit. Me, um, I was actually playing in New Jersey the night before. Uh, the night played, before I remember this. Yeah, we played against the Nets and uh, we stayed overnight. I had some friends up from DC, we just chilling. And uh, I was having a, a kind of an issue with Coach Brian Hill myself. Um, one, he didn't like me from the Vancouver, so I already knew. And he tried to say he didn't. He, that had nothing to do with the reason why he traded. So don't forget, Brian Hill is a guy who drafted me in Vancouver. Right. So I got you. I mean, I'm finally playing. got your ass. Uh, finally got. He finally got your yeah. ass. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, of course, he's the coach. So nobody there, like he's not upset about that. I'm like, really? Shit. So I'm looking at my my playing time demeanor. Everything, everything is going down. And I know, you know, the White is a great young athlete, a great young time, and they're ready to build that team around the White. So Grant, you know, Grant Hills, Grant Hills. He's a politician. He's not really gonna say too much for me. <laughs> he's not gonna say too much. You play with him in Phoenix. He's a great guy, Q, and um. I love him, you know what I'm saying? He's a good brother to me, he's always been. And I wanted some action, man. I wanted coming from Houston, having a great career, a great time in Atlanta, probably averaging 22 or something like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to play it. And they were, it was slowing the game down. Catino's gone, I'm there with a young Dwight they're trying to develop. I just came from this Houston situation and it's another year of a Dwight development, let's go. So New York at the time, I didn't know the I didn't know. That. But you ain't know, so know <laughs> <this story. laughs> What did you know, so, City? <laughs> I, I'm talking about, I get. You know what you get yourself into? <laughs> that ride from the New Jersey, oh, that hotel. I didn't know. To the garden. <laughs> and I'm like, what did I just get myself into? I'm, happy <laughs> I'm in New York. I'm like, New York, New York, New York. The city, I love it. Like Vancouver, I love the city. I'm overwhelmed, I'm happy, I'm in the garden. It's a great welcoming, big press conference. And that was it. (laughs) 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 And it it was an experience to me. (sighs) Be on a team with so much potential. So So much talent. So much talent. So much talent. I mean, you can pick from any position two guys who can start on any team. Mm-hmm. And when you have that type of power and you don't have the right person at the top of the totem pole from management, owners, uh, captains, and yeah. you don't have all of that structure the right way, it's going to be just like you've seen in New York over the past 
20 years, man. It's going to be hit or miss. Mm -hmm. And I was a part of it. And uh, the coaches kind of play with a lot of the players. Q, you can, uh, they just play with a lot of guys. Basketball games, mentality, talking behind your back. I was like, man, this is. So <laughs> I just stopped belonging to the city. And just take it <laughs> <laughs> so you gave yourself to the city. Huh? Hey, 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 time out. The best, the bet, the this was the arrival of when he became a city. <laughs> the man showed up one morning after belonging to the city, right? He declared, he declared to us all, I love New York City, right? <laughs> and then, first of all, he came in, he had, he had, he, he was out so late that he came in so early that he had to cop some new, I love New York boxes from somewhere, like straight off, <laughs> like, you know, off the street somewhere. Like, I'm the city. He like, you know what I'm saying? Then he came in, he grabbed his phone. He was like, yo, yo, we used to always put the music loud on the little thing, right? My man put it on the, you belong to the city. <laughs> hey, in the city and said you belong to the So I'm laying, I'm in the locker, I'm in the trainer room, just laying on the training table. Like, yo, what was that about New York City? I was like, man. And they were like, and I and I was talking to some veterans and some coach and the guy, they didn't, they weren't with me. I was with some of my boys from home. And I was like, yo, this is New York. We can go anywhere we want. And it wasn't like a big club or nothing like that. It was just so many different places I've never seen. I heard that, that, that was yeah. when City declared he came in, he was like, yo, we legit can do something any night of the week, <laughs> it don't matter. He was like, he was like, I've never been nowhere where like a dead night is crazy. He was like, nothing was going on last night. He was like, it wasn't a big party or nothing, y'all. He was like, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, that's coming from Orlando, d -Bus. I was in Orlando. The only thing they were talking about, let's go to Disney every night. I'm uh, like, man, uh, you know, it's, out. it's the crib now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So man, when I, when I was able to be in New York, man, it was something that I've always wanted to do, man, just to see the Big Apple. Um, and uh, just to see so many different skills of players who mentally, like they say, mental, mentality is tough in any sport. You have to be mentally strong to take the wear and tear of coaches, travel, family, eating. You have to be very mentally strong and, um, and have a good support system. Uh, yeah. But that was, that was the mental, one of the mental toughness for me was playing in New York, just to see the talent. And it's not all about talent, it has to be some type of structure. Let, let, let me tell you one of my favorite game memories with, with you in New York. And I know you gotta remember it. It was when we went back to DC. Oh my God. And my dog, like, it, cause it was like, you gotta understand, bro. We was for real, like the bad news bears. <laughs> when we went, something went good, we would be like, yo, it's going good. This is crazy. Like, it, <laughs> I'm serious. It was, it, it kind of felt, I'm not like, kind of felt like that. It was like anything that could go wrong went wrong for us. So it was like, bro, we went back. I remember it being a big deal. City started, had your fam in town. My man hit the game winner and jumped up on the thing, it was going crazy. I, I'll never forget that, like, like, how was that for you? You know what I'm saying? I, Cause it was like, this is a tough time. Like, for all of us, it was a struggle that year. It was like, a, what's going on? And it was like, you know what I'm saying? I, I could remember us partying. I could remember us going out. I could remember that being like, how was that for you? Like after being traded, after Houston, after Orlando, then you get there and you back at the crib and we had that type of night that night. Cause it was dope. And, I mean, coming into the game, man, I was a little anxious. You know, it was snow. I know we knew it was gonna be a storm, man. And we were, we, we just had won a couple of games. We had, we were on our way to the our first berth of the playoff. At that time, we all was taking so much criticism uh, about us not playing for Isaiah or Isaiah not believing in us. And I think at that time, me and you, um, we were shooting a lot after practice with Marlon. Yeah. I think we were doing a lot of shooting with uh, Mark, and we were just practicing. And we was like, how are we gonna turn it around? And then we got to DC. I was like, man, I'm gonna just shoot every time I got it there. And I think I probably shot with more confidence that game. Just not just because I was at home. I think where all of us were at the team, like you said, the bad news bad. And some good news came, man. And um, you know, the last play, uh Andre Bloch, I, I missed the free throw, and Andre Bronch missed the free throw and gave us an opportunity with the ball, man, pushed it up. I didn't see nobody. I mean, they said there was other people open. 
I looked at the tape chain. My man had one, you had one thing on your mind. I'm about to get I ended the game on that home. I was like, man, forget this. I'm going. If if I miss, I miss. So I hit the shot. And uh, man, I just ran. I seen my grandmother. I seen Q. I was like, time. I said, about time we got some good news. We on ESPN. The Knicks going to make the playoffs. Hey, he jumped on the thing like the whole team was running behind him. Nate Rod, you already know, like we had a team that if it was a time to have some fun, we was gonna have it. And I'm talking about like that was a that was like one of the most fun moments. Like, like period, my whole time there, like that was one of the like most exciting. Cause it was like he said, we was trying to do, we was trying to do, he was at the crib. It was like, and then like we were like the group that we were gonna get hyped for each other up inside the yeah. team. So it was like you the fact that he did it. it yeah, it was like the fact that he hit it, it was like we all went crazy as hell for City. Like, if we was all running City, we was jumping, doing the voice, running around, hey, City. <laughs> Man, yeah. I, I, I think, like you said, the camaraderie of, those, of all of our uh, all of our memories with the Knicks. Uh, I think a lot of, like, Jared, he, he's on now. He's with Denver. So everybody had their, their Knicks with our mob. Um, but you know, it was a great experience when you playing with some people that you really like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after the Knicks, you had the opportunity to go to a couple of teams, but you chose Houston. I want to get back to the new house. That was the yeah, only back to the crib. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hold that. I'm like, man, yes, I can live here full time now. I'm gonna come back and play. While you was in Houston, did you feel the love of them missing you? Heck yeah, I mean, to this day. Did that feel good? They felt good. It too. felt good. I felt comfortable, like I was yeah. back home. Uh, off the court, but on the court, man, I don't know what tricky Rick had up his sleeve, man. I mean, in practice, I was killing. I mean, I don't know what the issue was, man. This man bitch me. And I'm just looking like, I don't know what you want. Right. You know, so he put me in, I'm doing good. And then the crowd's yelling my name. I was like, look, man, if you think that you got to do that, I don't even want to play. So. Uh, even though I did have mild tendonitis in my knee, just so I, to, to, I'm going to be honest, just so I won't be embarrassed by sitting on the bench for something I know that I'm better than. I was like, man, let me just have tendonitis surgery the end of the yeah. season. So I, I was like, man, I'm not just going to let you demoralize me by sitting me on the bench and playing me spotty moments. Played a t- mental game moment. with him, yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, I've been through that part. So let me focus on my post career as I'm sitting on this bench. So when when you used to dunk, you used to your lean in was one of the best lean ins ever. Like how you used, how you used to lean in that jump? Like and sometimes hey, first of all, you, time out, time out, time out, time out, D Mac. He trying to make reference to some funny. No, 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 because I was gonna bring that up too. Hey, did Come you remember you dunked on Q? I did. Did I? Yeah, you got a little weak ass dunk yeah, on Yeah, you booed his ass, man. It wasn't even, first of all, it wasn't even cold like that. That's why ass. he don't even remember it. That's why he don't, it was not cold like I that. I sent it to you, Fresh. It was a, it was an and one. We was in the guard. So you he got, booed you his ass, it's an and one, right? That was because I slight back. In the guard. But, yeah, we look, the ball was so small. I mean, my hand's so small, you know, That's, we got a small hand. We got to try to rush the ball in the air. So that gave me the, the the velocity of just throwing it down. So that's why a lot of the times you see me when I in the duck contest, I would throw it up. So since my hands weren't so big, just to try to do it. You, you used to lean, you used to lean, and sometimes you'll be in there like this, and when you get to the rim, you just like you tap your shoulder, like like you look real you right here. You like nah, you was the first person I see just throw the ball in. So I, I got was, it from you though. Like I used to I watch throw- you doing it, and like. You a lean like Scottie Pippen used to, you know, he come across and dunk it, but you, you used to lean. As soon as you get to the rim, you a turn it. And you like, know that's that Jordan. Everybody thought they could do the Jordan. Dunk, man, man, like see, I used to, you the kiss the rim, huh? The kiss the rim joint. Yeah, yeah. Right, everybody. So, you know, outside man. of the the dunk, the N one dunk you got on Q, what is your favorite dunk? <laughs> you didn't even remember that dunk, bro. But go um, ahead. My favorite dunk, <laughs> I think. Uh, in Miami, man, they tried to trap me on baseline. I remember Jordan did that spin move. Oh, uh, Oakley and you and them. I didn't really dunk on nobody, but I just thought about Michael Jordan at that moment. I thought I was emulating the best way I could. I got a one hand dunk baseline. So I really liked it. It was in Miami. So, you know, Miami games are tough if your West Coast team get to go to Miami once. So it was a tough game for me that day. I tell me this, right? Like, D always say this about, you know, guys that, 
that I, when you get a special nickname, right? Like, it's one thing to nickname yourself or to call yourself something like you got a you got a nickname it's Stevie franchise like like that that not only is a nickname but like the meaning behind it that mean like you arrived at like I'm a franchise one. player I'm I'm the chise <laughs> like you feel one. me like tell me how it felt when you heard you know be you started being called that and that became like your nickname and you became a household name with that how did that feel. I think a testament to Hakeem, the way that he taught me of, of being that type of player, um, being early and leaving late. And I, I think that I, I exposed that early in my career to, like when, when Cynthia Cooper said she was in the gym, I was one of the guys with her at six o'clock in the morning before they practiced before us. So when she was working out, I would talk to her about how does it, how do you become a leader? You just won three champions. So my rookie year, they would be in season. So I'd be in the summer of the gym. And I work out with her and ask her how it is to be a champion. So uh, I think a lot of people around town and the commentators probably got wind of that. And I was taking the right proper steps to, you know, fill in for the King steps and hopefully get the city some championship. So I think it was a test with my last name too, Francis. So right, right. Yeah. Start bench cut. You gotta Uh-oh. start one, you gotta bench one, you gotta cut one. Uh current players. Uh Steph Curry, Sorry. Kyrie Irving, Damon Lillard. Oh, you got quiet. <laughs> you got quiet now. <laughs> I gotta go with Dame. At starter? I, I like nah, I, I, I like Dame because um I bench Dame. I start Steph. Because mm-hmm. he got championships and experience. And we need somebody to get everybody involved at first. Because Steph don't have to. If Dame don't get himself involved, his team gonna go down, but Steph got more options to get somebody else to get him get them started. But Dame, if he ain't started, I don't know if Portland gonna ignite. So I'm gonna cut Kyrie because it's too much baggage. <laughs> you know, too much baggage about teammates arguing. And if you ain't a straight up play in the league, everything else off the court doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? That's when you retire like us. And then you, when you play basketball, that's what you should focus on, man. Not, all that other stuff. We're not saying he's a bad basketball player, great basketball player, but the focus on winning championships should be the most important thing. Who is your favorite five? Not your top five, but your favorite five to watch and, and way to play it against or, or watch play. Who is your favorite five? I think my uh, the time we played in the All-Star game, we went big. It was me, Kobe, Kevin Garnett, Yao, and Shaq. That was a great, that was a great time. Another favorite yeah. five. <laughs> so I, all right, just give me the ball. Okay, nothing really dribble but cold with me. So I was like, ain't the ball to those guys. So that was yeah. the best five I played with. I remember that five. Yeah. KG at the three. We played All right, man, that's a wrap, man. We appreciate you pulling up, Wink. This has been a cool stroll down memory lane, man. Y'all check this out. This is with the one and only City. Stevie Legend. Franchise in the building. Appreciate you, my bro. Thanks, anytime, man. Holla at me, fellas. Deuces. Let's uh, knuckle up. <laughs>